Privilege of trying lots of these different foods. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 나는 재미예요. 이거 허비예요. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jem. This is Harvey. Nice to have you here. Oh, and we now have a noodle as well. I'm uh, surrounded by animals for today's video. <laughs> Hello. This time last year, I was living in Busan, South Korea. I was very, very lucky to have been able to live there. It was an absolutely amazing experience and I loved every second and I'm very, very grateful that I had the chance to have that experience. In fact, I loved it there so much that I actually plan on moving back there permanently um, after I finish university this year and work as an English teacher. And there are a couple other things that I want to do whilst I'm living there, but they're quite big things so for now I'm gonna keep them secret Ooh, secrets but once we get closer to those things then I will obviously tell you guys about them when I move there I will be vlogging the entire process everything from how I got the job to flying there to moving in to then uh, like first day of work for a first week of work all of that I will be vlogging all of it so I don't really know exactly when I'll be moving there I expect it will either be September this year or March next year but if that is something that you're really interested in uh, then please make sure to subscribe because I 100% will be vlogging all of that yeah if you like that kind of content this is the channel for you <laughs> honestly I could talk non-stop about how much I love living there but as the title of this video suggests today we're gonna be talking about Korean food um, I posted on my Instagram a little while back that I got accepted onto the K Influencer Academy program, which is very exciting. Basically, every month they give the K influencers a theme or a topic that they then have to make a video about. And the theme for this week, this month's video is the term math, which I understand to mean taste. So, going off of that, this video is going to be about Korean food. And I would absolutely love, 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 love for you guys to get really, really involved in the comments and tell me what your favorite Korean foods are. And if you watching this are actually from South Korea, then I would love to hear your suggestions of what foods you think I should try when I move back there. Um, so yeah, put your comments down below. I will be replying to all of them. Um, and let's get into the video. I'm going to split this video up into three sections. We're gonna have restaurant foods, street market foods, and pyeonijeon foods. Pyeonijeon being the Korean word for convenience store. I think we'll start off with restaurant foods. And I feel like anyone who goes to Korea and goes to a restaurant in Korea probably is going to get Korean barbecue. It's inevitable. If you go to Korea and you go to a restaurant, you have to get K barbecue. You just, you just do. So my favorite K barbecue place that I went to was in Busan. It was really, really close to Busan Station. I can't remember the name of the place though, so sorry. <laughs> we got, we had a lot of food. <laughs> we ate a lot that day. So we had, obviously, we had Samgyeopsal. So delicious. Um, the guy actually barbecued it for us. In some places they will cook it for you. They'll like stand at the table and cook it for you. Other places you have to do it yourself. This place they did it for us. And we were also uh, cooking the kimchi on the little hot plate thing uh, and we which was really nice but we also were putting like whole cloves of garlic on there we also had some rice with it obviously we had 
a few different leaves so we could make hands. And then we got some cold, spicy noodles. Uh, I think they're called, I think they're bibimyeon. That was a game changer. <laughs> that was a complete game changer in the world of Korean barbecue. It was so good. Having the cold noodles, like these cold, quite spicy noodles with the kind of fatty uh, pork belly. Oh, it was so good. It went so well. Now, whenever I have Korean barbecue, I always have spicy cold bibimyeon with it. It cuts through the fat so well. It's absolutely delicious. Also in the restaurant, we obviously had samjang with it. I love samjang. So we had this fantastic meal. It was really, really tasty. And once we finished, we then decided to go get dessert. And we went to, I think the place is called Sul Bingsu, something like that. Obviously it's a Bingsu place, so we got Bingsu. And we got tiramisu Bingsu. I didn't think I was the biggest fan of tiramisu. And then I tried that and it was absolutely, it was just to die for, it was so good. And we sat, opposite each other and had it in the middle and shared it um and it was really 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 good we ate a lot of food that night <laughs> it was so so worth it but i think definitely if you're gonna go to south korea go have korean barbecue so then my second favorite restaurant meal that i had was that galbi uh which is a chicken dish i actually had this a few times and there's two different dishes that I would recommend. The first one is just plain dak galbi, which I actually don't have a picture of. If I can find a similar picture online, I will put it here. The one that we got was kind of half and half. Half of it was very, very spicy. And then the other one was, it was still hot, but it wasn't extra hot. They came on the same big hot plate, but they were split in the middle with like this cheese and corn thing. The cheese really kind of makes the spice seem less painful. <laughs> so the one that we got obviously had chicken in it, but it also had slices of potato in it, it had vegetables in it, it also had uh, tok in it, so it had little bits of rice cake in it, which was really really nice. Oh my god, I love rice cakes, they're so so delicious. I don't really know how to describe the taste of that galbi, it's a spicy barbecue chicken? I think barbecue is my only way of explaining what it tastes like. I would highly recommend having it. And we also had another dak galbi dish, which was actually a dak galbi fried rice. Bye. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the second one that we had was actually a dak galbi fried rice. Um, and again, it came in this large hot plate, just like the other one did, and had like a mound of this fried rice. But because it had the rice with it, it didn't feel that spicy. It was spicy, but it wasn't an overbearing heat. So yeah, that galbi. I would highly, highly recommend it. It was really, really, really tasty, and I can't wait to have it again when I go back. Then my final restaurant uh, food type is maybe a little bit of an obscure one, probably not one that most tourists go out of their way to try, but it was probably one of my favourite ones. Really, really simple, kimchi jjigae. Anyone who watches my channel knows that I have a little bit of an obsession with kimchi jjigae. I make it myself all the time. It's like my signature dish at this point. They did other things as well, but we were specifically going there to try kimchi jjigae. And I, I honestly thought I wasn't going to like it because I like kimchi, but the idea of having a stew that is just kimchi, I have to admit, it doesn't sound appealing. However, we went in there and we sat down, we ordered it, we went and got our bowls of rice. It was one of those places where they have like these massive rice cookers and you go and collect the rice yourself. So we went, we got our rice, we came back, sat down and we had actually ordered kimchi jjigae and like a... I honestly, I don't know what the other dish was that we got. My friend just ordered it without telling me. <laughs> but the kimchi jjigae for me stole the show. It was delicious, way nicer than I thought it was gonna be. And the way this particular restaurant cooked it was obviously with kimchi, uh, but they also had tofu and pork in it. Um, like really, really, really thin pieces of pork in it. It's usually more of like a side dish. It's not gonna be your main dish. You will get it with other foods. If you go to a restaurant that has kimchi jjigae as a side, try it. It's a very warming, very, is a cozy meal. That's that's how I'm choosing to describe it. It feels like a warm hug. 
you know it's really good really good highly recommend so now i'm going to be moving on to the second section which is street market food um so street food is everywhere in korea absolutely everywhere you'll see street vendors all over the place sometimes in really random locations just like one person on their own but then other places you go to they will be like lining the streets there are also a couple of night markets where they will only open at night so there is one specific street market food that i really 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 want to recommend to everybody to anybody who's going to Hyundai in busan this is this is this is what you should do okay it's quite a short little street market I'll see if I can find a map to it and I'll put it here. But this road has lots of street vendors all kind of crammed together. They sell hot dog. But these particular ones are just so soft and fluffy. They're also really, really cheap. So you can get your hot dog and walk around the market whilst eating it. What we used to do, uh, me and my roommate, we, used, we would go to Hale and Dane. We would go to one end of the market and we would get hot dog. And at the other end of the market, there is an ice cream place that sells honey ice cream. So you can get just honey drizzled on top of this really soft, creamy ice cream. But you can also get um, a full like chunk of honey just shoved into the ice cream. Very, very sweet. But it's after having a really hot hot dog and then having the really, really cold, creamy ice cream. It's such a good combination. So yeah, I think if you're going to Busan and if you're going to be in Hyundai, you have to do that. It's really, really cheap and it's so, so good. Especially once you've got the ice cream, you can then go to the beach because it's really, it's really, really close to the beach. We did that a few times. We got the hot dog, then we got the ice cream and then we wandered around for a little bit. And then after we had our little walk around we stopped off at a bar called fuzzy navel and we sat and we drank some cocktails and then we went home and it was a brilliant day i loved it i think hyundai is a lovely lovely place anyway it's very it's, it's quite touristy but it is genuinely a lovely place next on the list for street food is the boki so the boki is like rice cakes in like this spicy sauce the Bokki tends to be really, really hot in Busan. So I didn't actually have it that much. I do think if you go to Seoul, it tends to be a little bit less spicy. So if you're in Seoul, maybe that's a better option for you. Um, however, if you can find a Bokki that isn't, you know, isn't gonna kill you with the heat, uh, it is really, really tasty. The actual rice cake is so soft and like chewy. And then the sauce is just so, full of flavor it's delicious and some places will have um other things in the sauce as well so maybe you'll have fish cakes in it or other things you know different different places serve them differently i recommend at least trying it at least trying it once even if you're in Busan, it might be too hot for you but you should still try it <laughs> it's a game of trial and error just try lots and see which which one you prefer so then moving on to the next uh street market food Corn dogs. I feel like this one's pretty basic. I'm not gonna explain what a corn dog is. Here's a picture if you don't know what it is. In Korea, they put sugar on them. You can request it to not have sugar on it, but the sugar's really nice. Sugar, ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, you can have whatever you want on it. There are lots of different options as well. You can have a sausage on the inside, but you can also have uh, like mozzarella on the inside. There are lots of different outsides you can have as well. Um, so there's the regular, corn dog there's the corn dogs that have like like chopped up pieces of potato around them there was a place that we went to that had like crispy ramen around the outside like fried crispy ramen if you're at a street market and you don't know what to get just grab the corn dog really easy really simple then the final one for street market foods i would say is tanghulu which is the like sugar coated fruits on a skewer. So I actually had this in Myeongdong in Seoul. Uh, I went to the Myeongdong night market. It was very, 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 very tasty. It's so simple. So when you go to a stall that sells tanghulu, usually they'll have loads and loads and loads of different fruits. Personally, strawberries are my favorite fruit. So I obviously went for strawberries, but you can also get like oranges, you can get grapes, you can get, I don't know, probably you could probably get like kiwis and blueberries and anything you can think of 
you could probably find there. It's a very crunchy sugar as well. When you bite into it, there's a proper crunch to it. Really good. The one that we went to also had chocolate covered fruits as well. And again, these are another street food that is everywhere. You will see it everywhere. <laughs> Honestly, I think if you're going to a street market in South Korea, I would say just pick a whole bunch of things, go to each stall, see what looks good, and just buy a whole bunch of things and try them all. Street markets tend to be really cheap. And personally, I love street markets. I think they're really fun and they tend to be really busy and, you know, you can smell all of the delicious foods and it's just such a lovely atmosphere. I really, really would recommend going to at least one just to have that experience in your life. And now we are moving on to Pyeongjom food, convenience store food. Pyeongjom food is just good. I know they're called convenience stores, but they are so convenient. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You're, you're never more than six feet away from a Pyeongjom at all times. It's it's crazy how many there are and they're super cheap and they're just they're fantastic i know there's like loads of challenges online where people do like oh 24 hours eating in the peony jam or stuff like that and they always seem to go to 7-eleven but honestly out of all of the peony jams in korea i think 7-eleven might be my least favorite when you could go to gs25 or cu why would you go to 7-Eleven? <laughs> so when we were living in the dormitory in Busan, the convenience store in our like building was a GS25. They always had a huge selection of ramyun, they always had loads of different drinks, there was always a selection of like kimbap and salads and sandwiches. Of the ramens, there are three that I would recommend. The first one is this one. This one is my absolute favourite. It's not really spicy, it's got a little bit of heat in it but it's not spicy it's so delicious i had it all the time <laughs> my roommate's favorite ramen was the gin ramen she liked the mild one i also think this is a really nice ramen and then i would say i don't have any particular brand of this one but another really good like ramen type ramen-y thing is jajangmyeon jajangmyeon is so good i think it's black bean noodles you can go to a restaurant and get jajangmyeon, but it's also, you can get it as an instant ramen, which is really, really nice. It's obviously really good with uh, ramen noodles, but it's also really good with rice. Yeah, I would say just very generically, jajangmyeon is really, really tasty. Then another one for peony jams is very simply kimbap. Kimbap is one that you can also get as a street food. I had it a few times as a street food where you would go to the stall and you actually watch them make it in front of you and they roll it and you're just amazed at how they're managing to fit so much food in this tiny little roll. It's mesmerizing to watch, honestly. There was a street market in Busan that, we, that me and my mum went to and the lady making them, she was only speaking Korean, my mum was only speaking English and I was speaking very broken Korean. But we had a full conversation and she thought it was lovely that I was there with my mum and it was just such a lovely interaction and she gave us, and she gave us the gimbap and it was delicious. But from a peony jam, there were always uh, like rolls of kimbap in peony jams, and there are loads of different flavors as well. So there'll be bulgogi, there'll be tuna, there'll be crab, there'll be veggie ones. There's ones that will, might have like a sausage in the middle of them. There'll be spam ones. Um, absolutely loads. There's loads and loads and loads and loads of ones. There'll be fried chicken ones as well. Then of course peony jams have loads and loads of snacks, crisps, biscuits cakes there are so many things you can get in peony jam snack wise i don't think i have anything that i would overly recommend i think they're all good if i can find any pictures i'll put a couple of my favorites on the screen here i liked the different crisps that they sold um very very different to what they sell in england if you're going to a peony jam try out the snacks they're really good but also try out and this is the next Next thing I would recommend, I think most of you already know what I'm going to say, banana uyu, banana milk. You have to try it, it's so good. But I also love the strawberry one. I honestly, between the banana and the strawberry, I don't have a favourite. I love both of them. 
So the kind of iconic banana uyu that everyone knows. There's loads of different flavors. So obviously I just said there's a strawberry one. There's also a vanilla one. There's also like a melon one. There are lots of different flavors. They're all really nice. Personally, my top two are the banana and the strawberry. There's also loads of different ice creams as well. And of the ice creams, I think most people would probably recommend the Melona bar. I'll put a picture here. Really, really nice in summer. They're very refreshing. I promise you it does taste good. And then finally, this is a weird one. This is a weird one, but my mother told me that I had to recommend it. And it's very simply, eggs. When you go to a Pyeongchang in Korea, there is always a section of boiled eggs that are still in the shell. So you'll get like this little container that'll have like two in, and all you have to do is take the shell off and you can eat them. There are some that are literally just boiled eggs and then there are some that are salted as well so that's maybe a bit of a weird weird one to add into this list but um yeah eggs there are so many things i could recommend from kyoni jams but every single one you go to will have different things in so if you go into one just have an open mind if you see anything that looks interesting just try it you never know i mean there are a couple of things that i tried that i didn't like but most of it I did like. So that's kind of the bulk of this video done. But my final honorable mention is one that if you're a tourist, you're not gonna be able to experience. But if you are an exchange student or an international student, this is something for you because the dormitory food, was so good. Being from England, school food, dormitory food, it's never really that good so I had very low expectations. Then I went there and I tried the dormitory food and it was just a completely different experience. You know you walk into the dining hall, two massive lots of rice first, usually there'll be two different ones, you'll have like a, um, a purple rice that'll have like beans and things in and then you'll have a plain white rice and you can have whatever you want, have both if you want. They'll always have a selection of different kimchi that you can have, there'll always be soup um, and then usually there's a couple of mains and because you're serving yourself you can give yourself as much as you want and then there's always like a dessert or something at the end. So yeah, if you're a tourist you're probably not going to get to experience the wonder of <laughs> dormitory food but if you are an international student or an exchange student um, you will probably get to experience this. Yeah, the food, the food isn't always amazing because it's something different every day. Sometimes it'll be things that you won't like but you will still have rice and kimchi and then a dessert at the end that you will enjoy or you can have the soup. Dormitory food is definitely an honourable mention. Okay, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was quite a different format of video for me. Usually I do vlogs. Now that I'm on the K-Influencer program, I kind of want to try branching out my style a little bit. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you liked about this video and what kind of videos you would like to see in the future. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. All of my socials will be linked in the description down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Look at this dog. This is how he's been lying next to me the entire time that I've been filming.